Native people. Native culture. Native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international Native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier Native voice in Native programming. There's a heartbeat loud as thunder Revolution is in the air There's a heartbeat deep inside our mother Are you too cool to Now, with Heartbeat Alaska, here's Jeannie Green. Hello, welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. We heard from Canada this week. Hello, thank you for watching. We also heard from Oakland, California. They're watching Heartbeat Alaska from KCSM TV from San Mateo, California, Channel 60. So glad to have you with us. On today's program, I got a special request from Ernestine Hayes. She lives in Juneau, Alaska. She wants to find out about your host, about me. So we'll take a piece that was aired from King TV out of Seattle and also a piece from Television Northern Canada out of Whitehorse. Both documentaries were done on myself and on Heartbeat Alaska, so we'll share that with you this week. Also, we travel to Jacksonville, Florida, to native villages around Alaska. We have news from Eve Little, all that plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. Don't go away now, because I'll be right back. Hi, my name is Joel Hall, and I watch Heartbeat Alaska at my home in Marquette, Michigan. And I really like the show. The news is great. The dancing is great. The videos are fantastic. And it's just an all-around great show, and I really thank you guys. Everybody dance! This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. With all the changes in Congress, there may be also a new chairman of the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. Current Chairman John McCain of Arizona is reportedly eyeing new committee posts in the Senate. His replacement may be Colorado Senator and member of the Northern Cheyenne Tribe, Ben Nighthorse Campbell. The National Indian Health Board will be working to develop a national native health issues policy. The NIHB just got $260,000 to conduct a national survey of native health care centers. They'll be focusing on those run by natives under contract with the federal government to determine the future of such ventures and send their findings back to Congress. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is looking into charges that the head of the Cherokee Nation Housing Authority improperly used staff time, labor, and tribal postage that was to work on the personal political campaigns of current Cherokee Chief Joe Byrd and a local legislative candidate, Charles Hoskins. In Florida, protests from local members of the American Indian Movement have a local store owner considering the removal of some store mannequins natives found offensive. The owner of Teepee Town in St. Augustine has been talking with natives about his displays, but those talks stop when the subject turns to his selling Japanese beadwork as the real thing. We'd like to thank those of you who have been sending in your news and information. We certainly appreciate getting it, and it does make a difference. We'd like to tell you how to do more of that, and I'll be right back with more Native news across the nation. Contact Heartbeat Alaska with your news. Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. That's Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. Or give us a call at 1-907-563-7440 or fax us at 1-907-563-9309. Heartbeat Alaska, your news is our news. 
The Mashantucket Pequot tribe of Connecticut are backing efforts by their kinfolk, the Eastern Band of Pequots, to in their bid for federal recognition. Richard Hayward, chairman of the Mashantucket Band, sent a letter to Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs Ada Deer calling for a full federal relationship for their fellow Pequots. The Eastern Band lives in North Stonington, Connecticut. A study conducted and released by a Wisconsin tribe says income tax collections rise in areas adjacent to tribally owned casinos. The study, done by the Forest County Potawatomi Tribe of Wisconsin, said 13 rural counties where tribal casinos were located have seen a rise of nearly 38 percent in the amount of taxes collected from local residents. Its numbers indicate during a four, the four years of their study, another $100 million made it to those local tax coffers. The Sac and Fox tribe of Oklahoma has announced the completion of a new tribally owned and operated juvenile offender center there. The tribe has been working with the state to establish a center to house about a dozen juveniles aged 12 to 18. Those are the young ones who are waiting their turn in the court system. The tribe is now talking with local county officials about placement of, uh, excuse me, a placement of juveniles in the future. They hope to be starting this coming February. Worry. And finally, in the past, many thoughts of natives in the tour tourism business conjured up images of families sitting by the road selling rugs or beadwork or maybe dancing. The members of the Iroquois Confederacy are moving to change that image and take over the business end of it. They're hoping to own their own national tourism office to attract visitors to the lands of the six nations, their peoples, and their culture. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife, and back to Jeannie and more Heartbeat Alaska. There's a heartbeat, louder thunder. Thanks, Gary. Nice to see you smile once in a while. Just kidding. Actually, Gary Fife has a wonderful sense of humor. Someday I will show you the outtakes from his readings. It's pretty fun. Let's travel now to Southeast Alaska, to the village of Heidelberg, the only Haida village in the entire United States. Heidelberg, Alaska is located on the Prince of Wales Islands in southeast Alaska. It was founded in 1911 by the consolidation of three former Indian villages, Haukan, Klinkwan, and Sukwan. The native village of Heidelberg was established by the government to provide for one central school. The community is composed of about 95% Haida Indians, whose ancestors came from Queen Charlotte Island of British Columbia. Heidelberg claims uniqueness as the only Haida village in the United States, although there are many Haidas in other Alaska villages. The Haidas are a proud and strong people. Theirs is a rich cultural history. Adjacent to the school is the park proudly displaying 20 beautiful totem poles, many of which were brought here from the villages that merged to create Heidelberg. In the past 30 years, efforts are being made to revive a culture once oppressed by Western civilization. In 1978, a Haida language dictionary was published, 464 pages long. Anchorage resident Leonard Hamilton grew up in Heidelberg say three quarters of the town are related to me in some way or another, the second, third cousins or aunties and uncles and and, uh, <clears throat> and I try to get home every, uh, at least um, every year uh, in the end of July or early August to get in my fishing. My parents and, and uh, of that generation were uh, boarding school kids, you know, and they'd all been, they'd all been taken away from them and, and Heidelberg was one of the only places where they still spoke the language a lot, but there was still a lot of, uh, not just in Heidelberg, but most of the communities in southeastern and I guess other um, areas of Native Americans that went through the same thing, you know, that there was, people were discouraged and sometimes punished for for practicing some of their old ways. And, and um, there were no totems being done during that time, no, uh, uh, there was no pride in in uh, in the art at that time, and, and uh, it wasn't until I was 
probably in junior high or early high school that that I was I started dancing again. There was a dance group starting, and and uh, I was fascinated by it because it told who I was and. Leonard's ancestors depended chiefly on fish and shellfish, and then on sea mammals such as seals and porpoises, sea lions and sea otters. Women gathered roots and berries, seaweed, and materials for basketry. They prepared, cooked, and preserved all foods, tanned animal skins, made all the clothing and basketry. Men fished and hunted both sea and land animals. They built houses, made the large canoes, and did all the wood carving and painting. The earliest recorded contact between Haida and Europeans was in 1774, when the Spanish explorer Juan Perez reached the Queen Charlotte Islands and traded with Haida Indians there. He was met by these canoes some 50 feet long. It must have been a formidable sight. In some Haida oral traditions, there are stories of voyages to Hawaii. Historic time is often known by first contact with Europeans. But Northwest Coast Indians had a vibrant history and kept oral historical records long before the arrival of the Europeans. This is Jeannie Green. Join me here in Anchorage, Alaska, Channel 7, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. for my annual Heartbeat Alaska Christmas special. This is one hour of joy and cheer. It's our fifth year in a row. Join us for one-of-a-kind Christmas special. to Florida, to Jacksonville, Florida, home of the Silver Lining Trading Post, thanks to this video sent to us from WJCT-TV in Jacksonville. My name is Mick O'Nawi, or Rick Knight. Um, six months ago, we had a vision that we would have a culture and educational center somewhere in this area so we could preserve the culture of native people. And we arranged with John and Mark, or Chivichina, from Silver Lining to have a place in the store that we could set up our nonprofit headquarters or council office. And from this place, in the last four or five months, we have had a wonderful success in bringing people together, gathering interest in organizing the first American Culture and Education Preservation Association. The basic idea is to gather the culture from native people all across the country. In this showcase, you'll see many items that are made here. The, uh, the uh, rattle there is made also by uh, Tuichi. And over here, we have a breastplate that he uh, made. He also wears these in the, in the circle during powwows. A lot of the crafts here are made by local artisans. This is ceramic pieces and this is some pottery. Native Americans made some of the most beautiful baskets in the world. These particular baskets are made with pine needles. This is Mesa Verde pottery uh, made out uh, by the Navajo. silver lining, we do most of the feather crafting here. Native Americans believe that animals are very sacred, and we believe that we should use every part of the animal if we're going to kill one. I think one of the best things we make here at Silver Lining is the sacred pipe. This we call the buffalo pipe. 
I do the artwork, and Toichi does a lot of the craft work on it. I think this is the most important thing, to bring honor, dignity, and respect back into the lives of our community. Here we have many of our sacred herbs that we use for ceremony. We have these herbs available for Native people who come in and need these for their own use. We use the sacred sage in our ceremonies in the lodge. And we also have books and educational material to help others learn about their culture. We're happy for folks to come in and visit with us and to ask questions and to learn and to grow and to join our nonprofit organization and to be a part of our cultural center and of the village that's coming in the weeks ahead. Ernestine Hayes from Juneau, Alaska called me recently. She said that she'd like to know more about who I am and more about Heartbeat Alaska. Well, Ernestine, here it is. King TV in Seattle last year did a piece on Heartbeat Alaska and me. Also, Television Northern Canada did a piece. She's tenacious, outspoken, and she doesn't know the meaning of the word no. She's Jeannie Green, the host, writer, producer, editor, and creator of the weekly TV series Heartbeat Alaska. Her program is seen by Aboriginal viewers across North America. Last year, we sent one of our producers to Anchorage, Alaska to see how she does it. It's been a rough trip, but it's been the best, most rewarding trip. The show Heartbeat Alaska, the woman Jeannie Green. The story is how one woman has brought the world of natives from the mouths of natives through the eyes of natives. She writes, edits, and produces Heartbeat Alaska every week. Jeannie's public performances began at an early age. These days would mark the inevitable creation of Heartbeat Alaska. Well, I was seven years old in Sitka, Alaska, and they first got TV a long time ago. And I had taken ballet lessons on my own, unbeknownst to my parents. And they, when they finally found out, they were, they were glad. But I was raised among, um, in a family that really encouraged and applauded and didn't laugh at our silly little antics as we performed. And that... But that's always stayed with me. But I've done theater. I've got a degree in theater from University of Alaska Anchorage with a minor in anthropology. And I've done like 50 plays and produced and um, owned dinner theater, directed plays and wrote plays. And then eventually I went independent and created Heartbeat Alaska, which is a whole half hour of news instead of just the two or three five minute packages. We're not out there pounding heads. We're not out there saying, you hurt us and we are hurt and therefore we are in this situation. No, what I'm saying is we have endured and we can help you endure. There would be a flagpole raising in their village, an elders conference, a basketball tournament. If it's important to the village, it's important to me. And I put it on and that to me is news. As long as there are viewers that are willing to get video, I will use it. Coordinate up. I'm Jeff Dorn. Join me Must again see. next week. Show, eat a goo. Stem na 
Let's travel now to southwestern Alaska and visit some villages on the Kuskokwim River. The Kuskokwim River is one of Alaska's largest rivers, running from the foothills of Mount McKinley to the Bering Sea. The entire river system covers approximately 52,000 square miles, or 11% of all the land. I'm in love with Alaska, period. But I like it here because it's relatively peaceful. Most of my family's here. It's modern enough to have a nice hot shower and um, there's fresh things at the store. Most, there's hardly anything you do without if you don't want to. And it's a, it's a clean smelling place. You can still hang clothes outside and they smell wonderful. Mm. And you can pick the berries and just do homey type stuff that I enjoy. The middle Kuskokwim area was inhabited by both Eskimos and Indians. The Kuskokwagamute Eskimos moved into the lower and central Kuskokwim River system over 500 years ago. Based on archaeological evidence, their ancestors came from Northeast Asia and by 3000 BC had developed a maritime sea mammal economy in Alaska. Three distinct Athabascan Indian tribes, the Inglek, the Kolchan, and the Tenania, inhabited the middle Kuskokwim area before the Eskimos. A recent archaeological dig revealed that the site located about 10 miles above Chihuahuabloc was a community peacefully blending Eskimo and Indian cultures. I'm originally from Crooked Creek, and uh, <coughs> they used to have fish wheels the old, old days, and there used to be hardly any drifting. In the old days, you know, we used to hunt by dog team. Just like in 60, 60, last time I went to the dog team was 64th Maniac, all the way to head of George River. And <clears throat> this a, I know, it was real hard, yeah. but you know, it, it was our life. It's like hunting long ago, it used to be all, all in one season in the fall time, September. So I don't know when it used to be closed, but you know, we used to hunt, you know. But in those days, you know, when, when somebody you know, asks for help, they just, everybody just pitch in. Mm. 
As was done by their forefathers, putting up fish for the winter is still a major pastime in June and July. The Kuskokum River offers a major source of food for the people who live here. In the summer, king tiger chum and red salmon are caught by drifting a net along the river or with the use of a fishing wheel. It's really a nice place to raise a family. for my fifth annual Heartbeat Alaska Christmas special. Cheers and joys from all over the state of Alaska. That's at 9 p.m., Channel 7, Heartbeat Alaska's fifth annual Christmas special. Thank you so much for joining us for another Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. I'm so glad that you tuned in. I hope that you send us video. When you live in your village, things that you do this time of year may seem boring to you and commonplace, but it's fascinating to the rest of us. Please call me at Heartbeat Alaska, area code 907-563-7440. Share the news from your village with the rest of the United States and Canada, with Russia, We'd all like to know how you live, and we appreciate you sharing that information. For all of us here in Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Jeannie Green. God bless. Have a fabulous week, and we'll see you again next week.